So empowered to level up, here's an incredible story. And here's what I believe. I believe that God uh, always is, is wanting us to level up in our life. And that may look like different things in your life. Uh, but he wants us to continue to level up. And I believe this is a year, as I said to you, the year 2024, as I'm studying different numbers and they, what they represent and what they mean, I, I think it's the year that, that year 2024 is the year of uh, the doorkeeper, the Lord who is the doorkeeper. So i just letting you know that as you go into a new year, just know this, that God, you don't need every door to open. You just need to know the doorkeeper and have a relationship with the doorkeeper. Jesus said, I am the one who can open doors that no man can shut in your life. And as you look at these doors, some of those doors may look challenging. They may, some of them may be exciting. Some of them may not look so good. But as you allow God to walk you through some of these open possibilities in your life and opportunities, God is going to level you up in so many different ways in your life. And I want you to see this. And one of those individuals was Jacob in Genesis chapter 32, verse 9 through 12. Let's read it. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, you said to me, look what he's going to do. He's going to recount, restate what God said to him. Go back to your country and relatives, and I will make you prosper. And then he says, I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown to your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed the Jordan, but now I have become two camps. Now he's going to ask God, as he just was able to reflect that, man, God, I would not have anything if it wasn't for you. You got me here. But now, God, I'm going to request something. And he says, save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers of their children. But you have said... He's restating again, bringing it back to God. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper, and I will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which can. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. And then... Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, look at the tenacity, the aggressiveness, the determination. I will not let you go unless you... And the man asked him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And then the man said, what is your name? And he says... Um, oh, so he, I missed it. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have, look what he said, you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. And Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask me my name? And then he blessed him there. And so Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. And then the sun rose above him. As he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. And therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. I want, number one this morning, as we look at God empowering us to level up, that God has empowered you to level up in your life, that we look at Jacob's life, that he has a history, and it's not so pretty. It's not really good. It's not glamorous, that Jacob had some struggles and had some issues in his life, that even when Jacob was born, Esau, there was two, uh, there was twins being born. Esau, his older brother, was coming out of his mother's womb first, and Jacob had his hand on his brother's heel, almost like struggling to pull him back in and say, you're not going to be first, I'm going to be the firstborn. Now, this is significant because the firstborn had a birthright, and there was promises attached to the firstborn. Uh, and so there is this struggle going on, and we know from the Bible that Esau did not. He actually despised his birthright. He didn't treat it right. He, didn't, he was half-hearted about it. Like, it's no big deal. And Jacob was always deceiving and manipulating, trying to struggle to get his way through life. And one of the things that he did was he actually tricked and manipulated and caused Esau to sell his birthright, his blessing, when he came in from the field, he was hungry. And he said to J Jacob, Jacob, cook me a meal, man. I'm starving to death. I'm about ready to die. And Jacob said, I'll do it. 
but it's going to cost you. And he says, I want you to sell me, write me right over your birthright. And he did it. He signed it over to him. When their father was dying, he called in his sons to bless them. And Jacob, or his father was going to bless Esau and bless, give him the, the firstborn blessing on his life. But what happened was when he called them in, it wasn't Esau, it was Jacob. The Bible says that Esau was a hairy man. I don't know how much hair you have to have on your body to be labeled a hairy man. But obviously, Jacob was not as hairy as Esau. But what Jacob did was, as he went in to his father to have that blessing, he, his father could not see. He was blind. And so Jacob put a, an animal skin with hair on his arms, and he, he says to his dad, Dad, I'm here. Go ahead and bless me. And he says, wait a second, I hear the voice of Jacob, but I'm feeling his hairy, your hairy arms, and it feels like Esau, you hairy guy, you. Um, and he begins to bless him. He gave him, put the blessing on him, and at the end when Esau returned, uh, he said, now it's time for Jacob's blessing. But he says, no, it's Esau, and there was weeping, like, oh, my goodness, I can't take back that blessing. I can't bounce over you. This was, I think, God ordained. Why did God allow Jacob to manipulate and deceive? I don't understand it, but even Jacob's name means manipulator or a deceiver. So every time Jacob hears his name, he is reminded of and has developed the characteristics of being a manipulator, a deceiver in life. But even though, even though Jacob had all these issues, you look at this. Look at this text. God blessed him. God's blessing was on his life, but... He's now at a point in his life where he wants to do something different in his life. He's blessed him to this point, but now there is more that God wants to do in his life. Can I just tell you, listen, you may have issues in your life, and you may sit back and say, man, God has been good to me. But I want to just tell you, God wants to do even more good in your life than what he's already done in your life. He wants you to believe him that you too can level up in your life. That we see Jacob going through different struggles and different transitions in his life. And he was transitioning at this point to a different level. After this point, Jacob was no longer the same. Something major happened in his life. And there are moments in your life that you look at how you've broke through and how you've increased some level in your life. Um, I, you, maybe you remember your first Mario game where you're trying to level up. Man, if I can just get past this level. When Ross got Call of Duty, I would just, it was my goal to beat my son at Call of Duty. I, and I never have. And I'm just like leveling up. And then I realized, like, man, as we're playing this game, like, oh, if I level up, I get new attachments and new features. It was like celebration day when I leveled up and I now had access to the juggernaut suit. Did I have any Call of Duty players in the, come on, somebody. Like, I've got this juggernaut suit, and I'm invincible now. Like, can I just tell you, when you level up in your life, God begins to put things on your life and levels you up to where the things that used to bother you don't bother you anymore. I don't know about you, but in 2024, he's the God of the open door. Then I want to make sure that I receive everything I can from God, that where I once struggled, come on, it's going to be a thing of the past. There are things in your life that you look back and you don't struggle no more. And I'm telling you, there's more. You think about maybe, maybe gaming is not your, your uh, connection here, but maybe, maybe it's algebra. Well, that was fun in school. Like, I, it took me a year. And in fact, I didn't even learn algebra all the way through, through high school until I got into college. And somehow it clicked in Physics, I loved physics and, and just trying to figure out the dynamics. And I love those, those things where they give you the gears and you got to figure out how, which gear and which movement is going. And, oh, it's going back this way. I love, that. I love that kind of brain exercise. Different things in life that you look at, that college was hard and you look back. And now you can go back. What you thought was hard back in college or in, in, in high school, you can go back and say, man, this is a breeze. Like, you can go back to kindergarten, and you can draw stick men in, in little houses like nobody's business because you accomplished some things in life. Do I have a witness this morning? I can draw a mean stick man, I promise you. Or remember, maybe, maybe music is your cup of tea. Maybe that's your connection point. 
You remember, I remember trying to learn how to play the guitar and just trying to get through that. And it took me a couple of years to get to a point where I could play some good riffs and, and had lead guitar down. And, and I struggled and my fingers would cramp and I had calluses on my, do I have any guitar players in the building? And you got calluses and you won't stretch. But once you learn how to do it, you leveled up and you're like, man, this is no big deal. I could do this with my eyes closed. And then when I saw Eddie Van Halen play the guitar behind his head, I want to do that. And it took me a year to figure out how to play a guitar. I could play a whole song with the guitar behind my head. What was that? I leveled up. But it's not just in, you think about even physically, like, like infancy to early childhood. Man, there's some struggles there, right? Like going from selfishness and a crying baby and a poopy diaper to a baby that learns how to do potty. That was fun too, right? Try to potty train your children. Or going from a childhood, from adolescence with pimples and your voice cracking and your mood swings to adult, early adulthood. I remember, like, my name, and don't you dare laugh at this, could be mistaken for a girl's name, right? But it really got worse when I got on the phone when I was going through puberty and my voice cracked on the phone and the man on the other end says well ma'am called me a ma'am she thought he thought I was a lady I'm like oh, I hate you I'm gonna throw this phone you look at even even our own life there are struggles and we're constantly leveling up in our life but I'm gonna tell you something there are no listen to me there are no shortcuts in life you're gonna have to go through some struggles in order to level up your spiritual life is no different I wonder, could you be honest this morning and say, God, where are you wrestling with me so that I can level up in my life this year? Your spiritual life, if you look back, you can say, man, I used to struggle with this, but I don't struggle with this no more. I'm telling you, there's going to be more in this year of 2024 that's coming that I don't want you to get your eyes and, and sigh or say, oh me, I can't believe I'm going to go through struggle. I want you to get your eyes on what God said to Jacob. You have struggled, but you have overcome. And I'm just telling you, I'm pronouncing it right now. We're going to see incredible overcoming in 2024. This is a life-changing moment that would have never taken place if it wasn't for his brother about ready to kill him. The struggle caused Jacob to reflect on God's goodness and his promise. And I love Jacob's heart. And this is why God loved Jacob so much. Because he had the ability to look at his life and realize, this is not me. Even though I have manipulated, I have deceived, I have swindled my way through. Man, God, you have still, despite of my shortcomings, you have blessed me. And I wonder if anyone can put away some insecurity or, come on, just down on yourself and just looking at your weaknesses and focusing on them and say, man, I don't, God, I don't know how you're going to bless me with all this garbage and junk in my life, but could you put that away and say, God, despite my weaknesses and despite my struggles, God, you're, the, you're still the God that can bless me. Even though they don't think I deserve it, even though they don't think I'm ready, God, you, when you say that I'm ready, you can and bring it into my life. And God had blessed Jacob, but there was more that God wanted to do. Jacob, listen, Jacob could have said, God has blessed me. I'm just going to be comfortable. I'm just going to sit back. I've reached this point. I'm saved. I gave my life to Christ 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. I know more about church than all these guys anyway, and I'm just comfortable but I wonder this morning if God is saying to you, I want to see you level up in this area of your life. And I wonder if you could say, and swallow, my, swallow the pride, the arrogancy, and say, God, there's room for me to grow in my life this year. Most people will never level up because they have enough blessing to remain in a comfortable place. Most churches will never move forward and reach more people in their community because they are comfortable where they are. Our church is good. When God says, I don't want you to be comfortable, I want you to level up. There are two main reasons that stop us from leveling up. One, fear. It's obvious. We're afraid to step out. We're afraid to believe God. Maybe we're afraid that he's not going to answer the prayer. Maybe we're afraid that we, did we really hear him correctly? And fear will stop you from leveling up in your life. But the second one is, I think, even worse, and that is comfort. 
Fear will prevent you from stepping out in faith, but it's comfort that will rob you from the motivation of faith. If it was all about ready to kill Jacob, Jacob would have never been motivated. But it was the discomfort of all of this that could possibly come against me to say, I am not comfortable. I want to see God, I want to see you do more. And I'm going to actually even restate everything that you said over my life. You said that I would prosper. Some could argue that he's already prospered, but not to Jacob. Jacob knew that God, he served a God who had even more for him. And I wonder if I'm talking to somebody in the room or online this morning that you are not in a comfortable place. Content, yes, but comfortable to where you're going to sit back and just let go on cruise control for the rest of your life? No, I'm going to actually move forward in my faith and believe that God has more for me, my family, my church, my ministry. Come on, do I have a witness in this building? You have to be humble enough to thank God that he got you where you are now, but hungry enough to ask God to take you further. And I feel this by the unction of the Holy Spirit. See, God, we know he's a God that can still do miracles. He he has not stopped answering prayer. He's a God that's not stopped, come on, dealing with people and reaching them, that he wants us to continue to believe him. They can take us even further in our life. Empowered to level up. Someone shouted, empowered to level up. Secondly, empowered to let go that we see it's ironic. Look at the irony that Jacob is holding on for dear life to something. And he says, I'm not going to let you go. But the very thing that he is holding on to is the exercise that he needs to do in order to let go of some other things in his life. That God has empowered you to let go of some things in your life. This one of the things that he had to do is he had to come to grips of his old identity. Nowhere that I have read in the Bible, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but when Jacob is introducing himself even to Laban, he never names his own name. But why did this angel, or why, I believe, I believe this was Jesus, a Christophany, and other theologians will tell you the same thing. This is where Jesus comes down in the flesh, and he not, this is not the only time that Jesus showed up in the Old Testament. But I believe as Jesus is asking him or this angel or God is asking him, what is your name? Isn't it funny? This is the first time that we see or read Jacob saying his name. I'm a manipulator. I'm a con artist. That he had to come to grips of who he was. But this is not weakness and this is not depressing. Actually, this is reality to say, this is who I am. But God, you can change me. I need you to do something in my life and bless me. It means like, like he's already blessed. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I need a different kind of blessing in my life. I don't want to have all of this stuff and still be Jacob or a con artist or all these struggles. I want to be transformed and changed. I want to come higher in my life and in my faith. I don't want to be a guy that has this level of faith, the kind of faith that only believes when it feels right to me. That's not the kind of faith I want. And I've been there. I want 2024 where Shannon Wooten walks into 2024 and the kind of faith that says, I don't feel it, I don't see it, but I'm standing on the promise and I believe that my God is able to do what he said he would do. Regardless of what it feels like, I don't need the feeling in order to worship God with excitement. All I need to know is I'm standing on, come on, I'm standing on the promise of God and he is who he said he is. He's the God that can open the door that no one can shut. So in order to embrace God's next level, you have to let go of something that's getting in the way. His name was changed. You're no longer Jacob, but you're Israel, which means Jacob, conniver, manipulator. But Israel means a prince with God. His identity, look at this, his identity changed. His character changed. His fruitfulness changed at that moment. Maybe you feel like, maybe there's some areas of your life that's not been fruitful. You feel like, man, there's limitations. I'm stuck. Why do I keep facing this? Why do I keep going back to the same thing? Why do I keep failing in this area? And God is saying this morning, I want to raise you to another level, but you got to let me. you got to embrace me. you got to embrace me as your God. you got to embrace me as your strength. you got to embrace me even in your weakness. Because when you do, you'll realize that I have the ability to transition you to a whole other level, and your fruitfulness will change. Jacob's influence began to change on the face of the earth. The Bible says that he struggled with God. It's interesting as we read the text that it says that he struggled with a man. He wrestled with a man. 
But by the time he's done, he says, no, 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 no. This was God. I wonder, we know Ephesians tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rules of darkness of the world, right? And we say, man, it's easy to identify that I'm wrestling with Satan and he's trying to attack me. But I wonder if we have put labels on things that we see either blame Satan or people and we look back and say, you know what? That was actually God that I was struggling with and he did something amazing in my life through that struggle. Sometimes God will show up in ways that you don't think he's going to show up. Like, I can just tell you, I thought that the unanswered prayer was Satan not giving me the answers or standing away. But when I look back and go back through it, I realize it was God that didn't give me the prayer that I was asking him for. Do I have a witness in this building this morning? It was the hardship that I thought that it was Satan or it was people, but it wasn't. It was actually God wrestling with me to bring something out in me. It's the pressure. It's the fire that God is saying, I got something in you, a diamond in you, Shannon, that I want to bring out. And it's only through the struggle that you can see what I want to do in your life. I'm telling you this morning, I'm going into 2024 with great optimism and faith. And I have and see so clearly what God wants to do. And I'm believing, but I do know this, that when I, I will face some struggles, But I believe this, that when I go through the struggle, I will come out the other side and see gold, diamond. I will see breakthrough. I will see the blessing of God through it. And I'm telling you the same for you as well. He struggled with God, and he says, you struggle with humans. I I see him struggling with Esau, but maybe what if the human, struggle with human, was actually symbolic for Jacob struggling with himself. Let me ask you, have you struggled with God? Can you look back and you say, man, there's some struggle where I was trying to figure out what God was trying to say to me through this issue or through this crisis in my life. And I struggled with it. I struggled with my faith. I struggled with God trying to figure him out and figure out what he wanted to do. Have you struggled? And I'm sure that if we're all honest this morning, we can see the struggles that we've had. But as you're diligent to stay in the wrestling match, like I I don't know about you, but my grandfather, man, he loved old school wrestling. I'm talking about Ted DiBiase days. Do I have a witness? Million dollar man days. I'm talking about, do I, come on, does anybody know what I'm talking about? The old, old school 80s wrestling. And my world came crashing down when I realized it was fake. I cried for weeks. It was a performance. These guys, can I just tell you this wrestling match? How do you wrestle with God and even have a hope of a chance to win? But God saw it. He saw determination in Jacob. And the Bible says he's holding on, and this man's not going to let me go. Now, I don't know what happens when the sun comes up. Like, there was an issue here. Hey, you got to let me go. The sun's coming up. Like, I know he's not a vampire. Like, is he doesn't want anybody to see what's going on. He doesn't want to see to be seen in public. What's the deal here? But there was a, a struggle here going on, and he knew that Jacob had such determination that he was not letting him go until he blessed him. I believe that as you go into 2024, you're going to have opportunities to quit, to give up, to pull back. But God is going to look at your determination and say, I am not going to quit. I will grip my teeth. I will bulldog through this thing. And I'm going to see God. And God, I am not stopping until I see you bless my life. I wish somebody in this room this morning would have Jacob's tenacity. That your faith would go to another level. And when you see all hell break loose, you will stand in your living room and proclaim, God, this is what you said. You said this would happen in my life. This would happen in my life. And God, I'm not mad at you. I'm just restating the promise of God. And I'm standing firm. And I'm not quitting until I see you move in my life. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? Do you realize that we are empowered with this kind of faith? This is not just willpower out of us. This is empowerment of the Holy Spirit that gets in us and says we're not quitting until we see Jesus return on a cloud of glory and raptures us out of here. We're not quitting. And if people would have that kind of tenacity and faith, God would look at them and say, man, I can't help but to bless you because that's the kind of faith that I'm looking for in you. So, God doesn't 
listen, God doesn't wrestle with you to prove your strength. He wrestles with you to prove your weaknesses. Because it's only at this point, this is what Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians. Here's what he said. He says, it's the foolish thing that God chooses to use to confound the wise. He says it's the weak things that he chooses to use to show people his great strength. You know what I say? I'm glad that you can point out my weaknesses. I'm glad that you can point out where I'm falling short because all I have to say is I'm still wrestling with God and I'm wrestling with the one who can turn my weaknesses into incredible strength. Are you with me this morning? It's, it, is, it is that we understand that God didn't want, listen, a match, a wrestling match with Jacob. He wanted a moment with him. And God wants a moment with you. That this is actually God, again, showing himself that he is so relational. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He leaves, he leaves his throne and comes down to the earth to wrestle with man. To show you how much he wants to bless your life. I'm going to talk to somebody this morning for a moment. Don't, please, don't go into 2024 with the same script that you had in 2023 that hurt your faith or discouraged your faith. Change your words. Level up in your words. Find new words. Find the prophetic word of God in his word and say, you know what, God? I'm not even going to focus on my weaknesses. I'm going to focus on how strong you are through me. Church, can we go into can we go into 2024 as a church and ministry to say God does not want us to talk about how tired we are, how much we want to quit, how much energy we don't have. We tried this before, this is not going to work. God wants us to go back to what Jesus says. He says, "I will give you power when the Holy Spirit comes on you to be a powerful witnesses among the earth. We're going to talk about, we're rewriting the script, we're rewriting the focus, we're going to talk about how much power God has given us, not how much, come on, weakness we're in. Are you with me this morning? Come on, if you believe that, give God some praise this morning. Where does God want you to raise the level of your faith? And there's some things that God wants to wrestle and get out of you to let go of some things. As you're holding on, there's also a flesh and some things that are hindering your faith that God wants you to let go. Quit fronting. Quit conning. Quit manipulating. Quit trying to pout your way through. Quit bitterness. Let go of prejudice. Let go of looking down at people, trying to make yourself feel better. Let go of judging people. Let go of playing God and qualifying if people are perfect or not or whether they deserve it or not. Let go of qualifying. Let go of being opinionated about everybody and everything. Let go of your opinions. Let go of pride. Let go of arrogance. Come back to what Jacob had, and that is that heart of God. I'm nothing without you. And I love this word, and I think this is where we should focus, and that is we struggled, yes, but that's not what I'm focused on in 2024. I'm focused on the word is you struggled, but you have overcome. We are more than overcomers through Christ Jesus. As you begin to, I'm not, God broke through in this area of my life, and I'm not looking back. I'm never going back to that old self, that old life. I'm not going back to Jacob. I'm Israel, a prince with God. God's put his hand on my life. I have overcome. Anybody this morning can by faith say, we're going to have a series of overcoming in this year. This experience propelled Jacob forward, and he never looked back. Lastly, this morning, we're empowered to lift, that we're not only empowered to, to level up or empowered to let go, but we're empowered to lift. Now, you've got to see the significance of this, of what God, the whole lineage of Jesus Christ is coming through Jacob, through Israel. And we see this, we see this Christ moving from Jacob, and we see a type of Christ through parts of Jacob's life. But this empowerment to lift came back from a promise that God gave his father and grandfather uh, Abraham, that even we see that Jacob was the one 
who actually actualized that his sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. Like, that's impressive. Like, Jacob got to see the fulfillment of nations and this nation being birthed and God blessing them and doing something incredible with their life. And that God has empowered you to see lift in your life. But not only in your life and not only in things around you, but also even in your own family that God has deemed you the one and has empowered you to be the faith agent and the ambassador of the kingdom of heaven to say, I'm going to be the one that's going to believe. I'm the one that's not going to give up on God. And I don't care what this culture does and how much they turn their back on God. We're going to be the ones that says we're not turning our back on God. We're going to believe him all the way to the end. In Luke chapter 10, I was thinking as I was doing this series on this teaching series on the empowerment, the empowered series, I came across this verse again and I read it. I want you to see this. I won't read all of it, but he says, Jesus said that 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons are submit, submit to us in your name. Now, we always fast forward, and if you hear anyone do this, they always go to this verse, but they skip the whole two lines before it. And I'm like, this, this frustrates me. Like, it's like we have to downplay. Anytime we get excited, someone's got to put their thumb on it. Right? We kind of step out in faith. Someone's got to be, now no, listen, be careful now. Don't have too much faith. We want to believe this. There's always someone, ah, now wait a minute now, now come on now. I want to walk on water like you, Jesus. Jesus said, no, get back in the boat, Peter. Come on, you're, looking, you're stepping out too far here. That's not what he did. Are you with me? Here's what he did. Here's what he said. He said, guys, this is amazing. He says, I'm going to tell you something. You're pretty amazed that these demons that have in control of manipulating people, and all you have to do is stand in a place of prayer in, in my name, and they have to listen to you. By the way, I gave you that power, right? You know this. And he says, I'm the one. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Guys, he's nothing. Here's what he was saying in essence. That's nothing. I'm the one. I saw in heaven that God sent him, and he fell from the, from the heavens and fell to this earth like a bolt of lightning. And then he says, I have given you authority. Someone shout authority. There's three Greek words about power, and one of those interpretations is, is authority. I have given you power. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. Talking about Jesus talking to mysteries, like, okay, how's that going to help me? I don't like snakes, and I'd like to be able to trample on them, but I'm not even getting close to a snake. He's not talking about snakes and scorpions. He is talking about this power and this ruler of darkness that tries to limit you, keep you limited, keep you thinking about your past, keep thinking about your old identity, and keep pushing you down. That tactic and that strategy, you have authority by Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit to trample on their nasty heads. And he says and to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. And then he says, however, do not rejoice that the spirits are submit to you, but rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Why do we miss that part that he's actually excited? And don't miss this part. And then he says, at that time, Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit gave Jesus joy to bring his disciples fresh revelation of how much power and authority he has given them. It's like you as a mom or a dad, and you see the accomplishments of your kids. You sit back, and you're like, man, I'm so proud of them. Jesus is full of joy, not just something that he stirred up, something that the Holy Spirit has stirred up. I'm talking about empowerment of the Holy Spirit. One of them is, how is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit stirring up joy in your heart, in your home, in your relationships, in your marriage, in what God wants to do in our life, in our church, in our ministry? How is the Holy Spirit stirring up joy as we see people walking in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Man. Worship team can come back. God has empowered you to lift and God is talking about, listen, here's how, why things will lift, because you have incredible strength this morning, not in your power, not in your abilities, not in your education, not because you have good history, not because you have a good track record, 
but you have power to lift your life and the things around you because God has given you his Holy Spirit this morning. God is constantly driving home the message of how much power, strength, and victory he has given us. I pray you go into 2024 with the stirring of the Holy Spirit and you just start focusing on how much power and victory that God has given you to overcome. This is what Paul says in Philippians 4.13. He says, for I can do everything through Christ who, gives, who keeps me weak. Wake up. Hello, somebody. I can do everything. I'm going to take it literal. I'm simple. I'm like a kid. I can do everything. Well, now wait a minute, Pastor. You got to wait. Let me, let me just, you can't do everything. I'm just taking the Bible. I can do everything. I can do everything through Christ. Come on, I can preach and teach even despite my weaknesses. I can lead a group despite my tiredness. Come on, somebody. I, I, can, I can build God's church. Come on, somebody. I can reach our city for God. I can see people come to Jesus Christ. I can be an effective witness and lead people to Jesus. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Come on, somebody, this morning. God has created us to lift, to lift our life, to lift people, to lift relationships, to lift ministry, to lift His church. And I love what Jacob says, God, you said I would prosper. That You know where that came from? It actually came from Abraham first, that God made a covenant with Abraham. And he says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make your name great. This is the blessing of elevation. This is part of the covenant of God. I, years ago, I did a, Kathleen, I, years ago, I did a whole covenant series on Sunday morning. And this is part of the covenant of Abraham. God says, I'm making a covenant with you, Abraham, and I'm going to lift your life. I'm going to make your name great. And you're going to have nations and people that will come out of you. And you're going to bless all the entire world that's going to lock into this. You with me? Now watch this. Paul says that same blessing that God gave Abraham and gave Jacob and gave Israel, he says, you as a Christ follower, the blessings of Abraham have come on you. And catch this, we're going to level it up to next level. Not only is it going to come on you, it's going to overtake your life. Now, how many wants to go on a 2024 and say, there's room for the blessing and the covenant of God to overwhelm me and overtake me? Can you stand to your feet this morning? And here's how. Who was it? Manasseh and Ephraim. Israel brings his kids in and he says, I'm going to bless all the tribes of Israel and I'm going to bring them. They're going to come to my kids. But he said, I'm not going to stop there. He says, Joseph, I want you to bring your two boys in, my grandsons. I'm going to lift their life too. It's the only ones that I see in the Bible where the grandchildren are actually coming in on the original contract deed covenant of God using them as the tribes of Israel and jo Joseph brings his two sons in Ephraim and he brings uh, who did I just say Ephraim and Manasseh he brings them in he puts his hand he says by the way son I'm taking your two boys I'm adopting them they're my sons he adopts them and he puts a blessing on them and it says that jo Joseph God is going to use them in a powerful way to establish the nation of God and he blesses the two grandchildren. I'm telling you, God has given you the power to elevate and lift even your own family. Now, what I love about uh, Manasseh, Manasseh means, his name means, it's the Lord who caused me to forget all of my troubles. This is for somebody this morning. This is for somebody. 2023, 2022, 2020, 20, I'm skipping some years. I don't know where it's been. But you've had some troubles, and they have been haunting you. And God is saying, I can bless you to where the blessing can be so much greater than the struggle and the pain that you went through.